Hello guys, welcome to our next video. Your host is still International Master András Tóth and will be for a long long time. Um, today I'm going to present to you a new game played or sent in to me by Captain Mulo, who uh, I happen to meet on chess.com, as it happens with me rather often. And uh, we played a number of games and I asked him to impress me with uh, something that he has produced lately and he sent me the following game. Um, perhaps not as spectacular as the previous ones, but on the other hand it uh, carries a little bit of a theoretical value for which uh, I think it's definitely worthy of having a look at um, this masterpiece which will be about um, slaying the dragon, or I should rather say how to prevent the dragon to be slayed. Um, so, Captain Mulo is black. He's roughly around 1900 feet A rated, by the way. On chess.com he has got a respectable 2200-ish blitz rating. Um, so yeah, Dragon, main line, which is always fascinating. Um, it is a really, really exciting opening that I would recommend everyone to play, uh, simply because of the uh, immense amount of tactical possibilities for both sides. Um, it is really a cool opening to play. Of course you have to be rather tactically minded for playing it, but the mere fact that uh, even world champions uh, included in their repertoire, and in fact world championship matches were themed around uh, the dragon is quite unbelievable or something that uh, we, should, we should take notice of. Remember Karp of Korchnoi uh, was a massive fight about uh, the dragon, uh, and then Kasparov was all about the dragon, and uh, Magnus Carlsen plays the dragon on a regular basis and uh, has quite a respectable score with it, so yeah, the dragon has not been slain yet. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to spoil much if I say that it won't happen in this game either. Alright, so, uh, everything happens in uh, accordance to theory. Um, I think that uh, G4 is more accurate here, but um, it has been a couple of years since I properly spent time on my own opening repertoire, so there is every chance that I'm talking total nonsense. Um, knight c4, bishop takes, knight b3, queen a6. There are two more moves here that are considered to be theoretically fine, queen c7 and uh, queen e5, which seems a bit dodgy, but it's also playable, and queen a6 is the third option, and here e5, in my opinion, is actually a mistake, despite of the fact that it's a very tempting move. Um, it is actually not the best. Best is bishop d4, almost against every uh, queen move, because you want to neutralize this monster um, dragon bishop that uh, is looking at our king uh, down on the queen side, and um, yeah, it needs to be somehow neutralized, and bishop d4 later on can be followed up by uh, g4 and then, uh, sorry, oh, g4 and then h5, or sometimes knight d5 and then swapping off the f6 knight and the g7 bishop, leaving the king entirely defenseless as far as pieces around it are concerned. Anyway, um, so e5 was played, and then the knight dropped back to e8. There are a variety of tactics here that uh, we should be aware of, mainly that after d takes e5, we would not be crowned as the wisest man of the day, because of knight c5 immediately uh, wraps up the game. So yeah, knight e8 was played, which appears to be very awkward, but uh, uh, truth to the matter is, uh, or fact to the matter I should rather say, is that we can't really make any uh, significant progress from this point on, because if you take on d6, the knight takes back and it just rejoins the game, and in fact is even closer to the queen side, and otherwise what are we going to do with our e5 pawn? So the white dude who played this game, Anton Demchenko, which is also a nickname, decided to play knight d5, which appears to be quite sensible, dropping the e5 but gaining the e7 pawn. Apparently, by the way, this is still theoretically uh, a known variation, and after knight takes e7, king f8, he dropped the knight back to d5. Now, it might feel that the king is a little bit uh, shaky now, and feels a bit insecure, but again, uh, we haven't really made any progress. The fact that the e7 pawn is missing hardly makes this king side weaker, and after rook a c8, in fact, now white is on the defense already, and has to be very careful about what he does. Um, rather unsuspectingly, here white played c3, which actually loses the game on the spot. Better would have been rook c1, very passive or the immediate check followed by knight e3, which is what white would do, by the way, after rook e3, bishop f5. Here, actually, it's uh, even stronger, because after knight e3, I mean, black goes somewhere, um, let's say, 
I mean, actually, he has to block this check rather because uh, 97 check is pending otherwise. So let's say bishop g7 takes, something takes back, let's say knight, and then 93 is very annoying because it's hitting both of these pieces plus guarding c2. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is some the way how White uh, should have responded to it, but uh, he decided to give the opportunity to Captain Mulo to be featured on my YouTube channel by playing c3, which of course allowed a spectacular finish, bishop f5 check. Now the king must go to a1. Well, it doesn't have to actually. King c1 would be better. But, um, yeah, queen takes a2, hitting the knight, threatening with mate, wraps the game up immediately. Uh, so why chose the even worse king a1, just in the spirit of allowing a spectacular finish, and got mated very nicely after queen takes a2, king takes, and rook a4. Quite a nice and neat finish indeed. Um, a cute little jam, a cute little game that uh, Black can be rightly proud of. And um, as I said, it has a little bit of a theoretical value because if nothing else, at least we learned that in this position after Queen A6, E5 is more of a blank shot than an actual useful positional trick to gain advantage. So remember that Bishop D4 is the way to go. But other than that, I have to raise my hat. It was a great effort by Captain Mulo. Well done. And uh, please don't forget to send me uh, even more games so that um, I can popularize you, chess, and uh, my amazing analytical skills as well. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will be back with the next video soon. Bye.